So I've just been using Excel's XLOOKUP function. And let me tell you, it's a hell of a lot better than VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH and HLOOKUP and it'll make you 300% more effective in Excel. Let's get in and have a look. So here we have a data set where we have the store number, store name, sales value, profit per store and profit percentage by store. I have the store number and I want to find the store name. So let's see how we'd use that using XLOOKUP function. So equals XLOOKUP tab. Our first argument is lookup value, which is effectively our store number, the value that we want to look up. So let's select that cell. Then we hit comma. Second argument is lookup array. This is effectively the column or the array where store number sits. So in this instance, we can see it's in column C. So let's select cell C3, and then we can control shift down to select that column. The next uh, argument that we need is return array. So this is effectively the column where the store name sits. So if I select uh, column D and control shift and down. Now at this stage, we can just close our brackets and hit return. And we can see the store 210123 is effectively Rome. Now, where XLOOKUP beats VLOOKUP all the time is effectively that VLOOKUP can only move to the right. And we can never actually use VLOOKUP to look up any lookup array to the left. Well, XLOOKUP overcomes that problem. Let's just have a quick example. So here we have store number and we're looking up store name. But if I just change my return array and change that to region and then hit return, you can see that my store, which is Rome, is in region Europe. And effectively, we can use that to look to the left. So there's no need to use index match anymore. If I go back into my formula, and go through the next argument, so using comma, is if not found. Now this is a fantastic new feature of XLOOKUP, where effectively it's a built-in error handling. So if it doesn't find uh, your store name, you can actually specify a return or what you want the formula to say. So in this instance, I'm just going to say not found. My next argument is whether you want an exact or an approximate match. Now, XLOOKUP by default always defaults to exact match. And if you remember from earlier on when we first did the formula, um, we didn't have to specify that because it's done by default. But we can also specify whether we want a, a smaller or a larger match. Um, and they're particularly useful for sales commission and taxation calculations or we can use it for a wildcard character. So that might be where we only partially know someone's name and we use that then to derive a result. The next uh, comma, then we get to our final argument, which is effectively how we want the search to run. So will it go from top to bottom or will it go from bottom to up? Now, historically, it's always gone from top to bottom, but we can specify if we want to start to look up from the bottom up and that's particularly useful if you want to get the last sale uh, from an employee, etc. So if I hit return, that's what it gives us. Now we're going to have a look at how XLOOKUP can effectively replace HLOOKUP as well. So here we have a data table, uh, similar to the last example, but the layout is slightly different. So this is where we have the store name, region, sales and profit effectively going down the rows instead of along the columns. And if we look at the example here in the HLOOKUP for this store here, 265233 for Boston, effectively what we would do is we would look up the store number in across this full array, so effectively from B2 to E7. And we would look down to the second row to find the store name and then effectively put in zero to say we wanted an exact match. So that formula is a lot more simpler with XLOOKUP. So let's just enter it in again. So equals XLOOKUP tab 
uh, our lookup value so that's our store number so where are we looking for that lookup value so we are looking for it across these three cells here a comma a return array so we want the store name so let's select that row there and again it's an exact match because it's default we don't have to put it in close our brackets and hit return and we can see we get the same answer just with a lot less typing okay so let's see how we can use wildcards in match mode to help us get an approximate match so wildcards are special characters that can stand in for unknown characters and they can help us return data based on the pattern so in this particular example we've got a, a new data set which is effectively a, a list of people and then a list of store IDs. But what about if we only had the surname of a particular person? How would we get a result? So if we only knew Smith and we didn't know his first name here, John Smith. So we can use XLOOKUP to help us get an approximate lookup here. And then have a look at how we build that in. So equals lookup value is effectively Smith. But we know that there is some characters before Smith but we don't know exactly what they are. So for the moment, we're going to have to put in a wildcard. And I'm going to use strix wildcard there. We're going to use strix, and then I'm going to put in an ampersand, and effectively then the lookup value here, which is the surname Smith. And we're going to use our lookup array, which is effectively where Smith is, and that's in this column here. Then our return array. Oh, she's going to put in the error handling in here because we're just going to use an example later on. So I'm going to use not found. Now we know by default it will always use an exact match. And this is where we need to specify that we want to use a wildcard. So the wildcard being the asterisks in front of Smith. So we're just going to put in there and close our brackets and you can see that through using the wildcard we've managed to establish that smith as an uh, employee id of 85233 now we can actually check that for one of the other employees so let's just type in brown see it returns the value for brown also do is we can put in a surname that doesn't exist within our list see that's where the error handling kind of kicks in and says that's not found. Now we're going to just look in a little bit more detail around XLOOKUP's match mode feature. In particular to get an approximate match and this will be useful for uh, calculating commissions etc. So here we have a data table similar to what we had previously. I've just added an extra column in for store manager commission. And then we've got an extra table down below, which effectively just details out the commission percentage that's applied to each um, cash profit. So in this instance, everything below $25,000 gets a 0% commission. Everything from $25,000 to $50,000 gets 5%. Everything above $50,000 gets 10% and so on. So let's see how we can use XLOOKUP to um, calculate what percentage commission each of these stores should achieve. So if I go in and enter my formula equals. Okay, my lookup value is going to be my store cash profit. Then I'm going to use my lookup array, which is going to be my store cash profit down here. I'm going to actually fix the amounts here because I'm going to drag the formula down here. So I'm going to hit F4 to lock that and comma. Turn array is my commission percentage that's applied to each cash profit bracket. So again, I'm going to select that, control shift down. And again, I'm going to lock that value again. So I'm going to go F4. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. So I'm going to skip over that. Now, this is where we get to our match mode. And you know by default, it'll exact match. 
but in this instance i want to actually use an xmax match or next smaller fight so i'm going to select that and hit so that puts in a minus one figure in there and then i'm going to close my parentheses and hit return what this basically tells us is for the dallas store which is earning thirty-eight thousand dollars the store manager will get a commission five percent so let's just have a look at that the so thirty-eight thousand dollars sits between 25 and 50 so that should be a five percent so that looks correct so let's copy that formula down you can see then it populates uh, our store manager commission for each of our stores so let's just check one of these let's check another one here so let's check rome so the actually profit for rome is only 3835 so that's below the 25000 uh, bracket so that's a 0% commission so they all look correct let's look at a more complicated example where we're going to use xlookup as a two-way lookup effectively using two different variables to get one result so the data set we have here is similar to what we've had previously, where we've got store number, store name, and we've then got three financial metrics. So sales, profit, and profit percentage. We want to find the sales for the Paris store. So we can use XLOOKUP to achieve that two-way lookup. So let's enter in the formula and see how we do it. Equals XLOOKUP. So we want to find the Paris store. That's our lookup value. We want that in the lookup array, which is column C. Now, for our return array, we need to build in what's called a nested X lookup to help us distinguish between the different financial metrics. So I'm just going to simply type in another X lookup within that. This time, our lookup value is going to be our financial metric sales. A is going to be the name of our financial metrics along the top, comma, and then the return array is effectively the bank of data which has all of our financial metrics. If I close that once, I close the second X lookup, and I put in a second bracket, it'll basically close both X lookups and hit return. And you can see that returns the $791,000, which we can see here in Paris and what we can do is we can change our financial metrics down to profit and you can see for Paris that changes it to $102,908 and if we wanted to change our store to Berlin we can see the profit Berlin is 58149 and that seems to be correct from the data table here so you can see it's a really powerful and dynamic tool that you can use so hopefully that's provided you with a little bit of an overview of how powerful xlookup is there are a few drawbacks however so it's only available for excel 365 and for excel online but if you manage to get those i think it's a really useful tool to have in your toolkit if you like that video please check my next video just up here